All right, um, so calling the meeting uh, to order at 6.06. Um, today, uh, the purpose of our meeting, we're doing um, board orientation. Um, we're do gonna be doing some monitoring work and uh, a little bit of policy work. We're doing the second reading on an adjustment to uh, policy 4.2, which we did a self-evaluation on the last meeting. Um, and that's in the second reading, so we need to uh, accept that one or, or not. Um, so that's sort of the purpose of our meeting today. So, um, and we uh, have an opportunity now um, for general public comment. I am going to try to um, just read a little preamble or prologue before public comment, the general public comment every time we have a meeting. So if I don't do it, please hold me accountable and say, hey, Ann, you didn't read the little uh, preamble. So uh, the board welcomes comments, but it is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. You're here to listen. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Comments are to be addressed to the board chair or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board of the staff or of the public. Uh, we'd like you to raise your hand and wait to, be, to speak until you are asked by the chair. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your relationship to the district. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Making personal, impertinent, threatening, or profane remarks, as well as any remarks that breach the privacy or other rights of the students, parents, staff, or the public are prohibited. Uh, the board chair will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. So do we have any members of the public who would like to speak? Peers? Online, so. No one online. <coughs> so we will move forward. Yes. And I'm not sure, I'm not on the agenda that I can see. I did ask for some time to okay. go through. Okay. Um, this would be an appropriate time to amend our agenda okay. if um, if we need to do that, so. So I just needed to present um, the findings of our comprehensive local needs assessment for RTCC for board approval. Okay, so uh, can I have a motion from the, the board to add the, tell me again. <laughs> Com comprehensive local needs assessment. The comprehensive local needs assessment. There you go. Report from yeah. Felicia Allard, the director of the tech center. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second from Chelsea? Uh, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 All righty. Um, so we'll just, um, let me just look at the agenda. Um, why don't we, this is really, it's, a, it's a, um, something that probably goes under the consent agenda, but we can move it up to now just so that you can do it and we can move on. That would be amazing. Um, Thank you. So Thanks. we'll, we'll <laughs> put it under, oh, okay. so it's the Exit. comprehensive. It comprehensive Local, local Needs, needs assessment. assessment Report. Right, and I will try to be maybe a bit more brief. There was members in here uh, that heard the more lengthy report. And before you start reporting on it sure. to us, what, um, what do you need from us? So in the end, I just need approval that you agree with the findings. Okay. 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 Go ahead. To go ahead. And a yeah. vote. A vote, yeah, a vote to yes. approve okay. the findings. Let me reword okay. that. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, just to kind of give a little bit of background, the comprehensive local needs assessment was required by the Agency of Ed 
Uh, it's re required, I, I'm guessing, now every two years. It's a pretty comprehensive process where we have to survey a bunch of people and collect a lot of data, analyze our data, and it essentially is to figure out if we're offering quality programs that are in line with the labor market and, um, you know, appropriately staffed and all of these different pieces. So in summary, um, I'm going to be pretty brief here. It looked at student performance. Um, one area that we need to really look at as far as improvement is going to be our academics. So at this point, we have one math teacher, we have one English teacher, and our scores are 20% in the 20s with 10% proficiency for science. So those are areas that are, are weak and need attention and that need to be addressed from this CLNA. Um, in addition, you know, we have a, a lot of great things happening at the center, but every program needs to ensure that they are offering a post-secondary credential, like an industry-recognized credential that's tier two, or they need to offer a dual enrollment course. And as of right now, the state has down three, pro three programs that did not meet that requirement, uh, but that's because the data is from two years ago. In reality, last year there was five. So that's a, an area of need that we need to look at. Um, but in terms of student performance, we have 100% graduation rate. Um, all of our kids walk away with a solid post-secondary plan, um, whether that's into industry, the military, or um, into college programs. Or We did a little study on the labor market to find out if our programs aligned. And it turns out that all 12 of our programs do meet those alignment uh, qualifications. All of the occupations that we offer are pathways that are growing in our area, with culinary being the number one um, growing industry. And so essentially, I feel like we are offering the right programming for our kids and for this region. In terms of the programs themselves, we were looking at size, scope, and quality. Those are the indicators that the agency and the federal government is looking at to ensure that we're offering um, quality programs. And our enrollment as a center has gone from 105 to 165, I think Robin told us in the last meeting, in two years. So I would say that yes, we are um, definitely, you know, those programs are filling and um, the size, we're, we're, that's not a concern. There are no programs in jeopardy of closing because of size. Um, scope and quality, that has a lot to do with what I mentioned a minute ago, where we need to ensure that we are providing really good opportunities for kids prior to joining us and pathways after they join us, but also the industry recognized credentials and college education that they uh, can achieve while they're with us. So those are a couple of things that we do need to work on as well. Um, and COVID has limited our ability to participate in CTSOs, which stands for um, Career Student Technical Organizations. I think I have that correct, or I'm not sure. I always get it messed up. Um, but essentially, they are, are clubs that the kids can join. They compete in events that relate to their subject area, but they also learn leadership skills. Um, that, I think, this year is going to be the first year that maybe those get back up and running and back to normal, and I'm asking every program to align with one CTSO. Um, in terms of faculty and staff, um, they were surveyed as well, and all in all, it, it seemed really quite positive. Uh, we do have a fairly new staff, like really like a lot of the staff members over the last two years. Um, but essentially, I think the overarching feeling was that we have a positive culture and that they have the resources they need to do a good job. Um, I think the one area that we need to look at, as mentioned in the last meeting, is that we need to look at the contract to ensure that we can keep or retain these people because the pay difference between industry and what we're offering them is significantly different. Um, and also, there's a, a little bit of uh, inequity, I think, in how we value their industry experience versus educational experience. So we just need to look at that. <clears throat> um, professional development, I guess that area, one of the things with that is over COVID, you know, we, we did our best to, to provide professional development, but really we were in survival mode in 2021. 
and we did some work on career trees, which is career exploration. 21, 22, we had a whole lot of new staff, and I think our focus was on responding to their needs. Um, and then this year, I feel like with our orientation that we did prior to them onboarding the new staff, we've been able to really make a solid PD plan, and we're going to have um, probably the first year where that's been really in place in three years, so it's improving. Um, and then I guess progress towards equity. Um, we have 40 to 50 percent of our student body on plans, whether that's uh, IEPs, 504s, or ESTs. Uh, that's a pretty high number, but it is congruent with a lot of the technical centers in the area. Um, but I think that's an area that, you know, to think about, one, how we service our students and the services we provide to them, um, and are we providing pathways for um, all students that come from our region. And so just something for us to think about. Um, we do have pretty good non-traditional rates in programs as far as females in predominantly male programs. Um, that's been a, kind of a, a strength of ours. I think with the staff turnover, that's been changing a little bit, and we kind of have to re-energize and get back into that. We also need to look at uh, how we introduce non-traditional programs to boys, so dental, health careers, and education. Um, so that's a, a, an area we need to look at. In terms of career exploration, this goes along with that whole providing a pathway from prior to they join us to afterwards. We have done a few things that I think have helped that. We created the pre-tech exploratory program, so kids that come in as freshmen and sophomores really have an idea of what they want to do when they leave that program. We've done uh, professional development and provide uh, kids with resources around the career trees, so that's pretty uh, important work that we do. We do offer the ASFAB testing. We do youth science, which is also an aptitude and interest testing. And then we do offer tours for grades four through nine. So kids that want to come, I, I toured some, I think we had some kindergartners last year, or preschoolers maybe, I'm not sure, um, which was really awesome, going to building trades to see their little sinks be built. But anytime we can get um, kids into the building to see what we do, it's always eye-opening, because I don't think they really understand how this school can look really different than their school. Um, so, and then this summer we offered a middle school age summer camp for the first time. Um, but all in all, I think we've met a lot of the quality standards. I feel good about our um, comprehensive local needs assessment. I know the areas we need to work on, which is really around academics, um, and just making sure that every program offers um, IRCs and dual enrollment. So, how about questions for me? So I actually have a question for you, Lane. So the tech center is pulling kids in from from districts outside of our own district. Mm -hmm. So as we as a board look at the tech center, how do we, so we're looking, because our students from Randolph could be doing really well mm -hmm. academically, but maybe those sending town schools could be pulling, I, don't, I have no idea. So how do but, we aggregate the data? But yeah. how, do we, how do we kind of pull that apart? Or how do we just look at or, or collect data yes. so that you're looking at, okay, here's where all the students come in, this is where they're at, yep. they're in our system, in, in our tech center, can we measure improvement from their yep. enrollment and when they're the done end. to say, look at this, yep. they might have entered our system way um, down here, but through being with us, yep. they've actually improved a whole lot. It may not still be. And we do have the means to, to track that, actually, okay. and that's a great point. Um, career centers in Vermont have adopted the Work Keys testing, which tests in ELA and math. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our students do the science exam, which is hard because we don't really have a lot to, to do with that. Um, but we do test them like we'll be testing them probably in October or November. Mm -hmm. So that's their pretest. And then we test them again at the end of the year so we can see the growth and we can figure out, you know, if that growth has been made. We also have adopted the Work Keys curriculum, which is going to target the areas that we need to really focus on for each kid. 
So that's going to be good. Yeah, you asked, uh, asked a lot of questions. I'll right. kind of <laughs> jump, jump it together there, which are good questions. Um, you know, even at the, when we're looking at RUHS and, and the different teams that are working on curriculum, they are looking at reinterpreting um, the board's ends. And one of the reasons to do that is um, originally we had focused on, you know, the state testing, the SBAC, the Vermont Science Assessment, whatnot. The state has changed that test three times in the last five years. It looks like they're potentially changing it again. Um, so it is impossible to get trend line data that way. Um, so they are, a lot of what is coming out of the groups, as, as I'm seeing what they're starting to look at for their own interpretations that they're developing, it really is around growth, um, which I think is, is important. Um, two of the, or three of the things, and I think we've talked about it at the board before, um, that makes life difficult for RTCC is that the students are there, um, they're invested in their programs, or in their programs all day, they get pulled out um, to do math and ELA. Currently, a little bit of science, it sounds like, is coming back, um, having one of the RUHS teachers go over there. But it's a limitation of resources. Um, if you've got a math teacher and 166 kids at the tech center, that's almost double the normal workload. It's not going to be very effective, but the problem is if we want to increase staff, then our tuition goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were we talked about it, trying to add another individual. And what was it? It was going to go from whatever the twenty thousand it is now to thirty four with that one individual. Um, and so that's that's a, a problem um, mm -hmm. that we're trying is to address. Is there a way to um, <clears throat> work professionally with your 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 content staff person to do some of the some of the basic math stuff? So they come out for some of the math, but then they do that sort of applied math within so this culinary year, or, another great you question. know what I mean? Yeah, so um, actually this year is the first year that we've kind of changed our programming a bit, mm -hmm. um, partly due to the fact that we have such a little s small staff to make it a bit more streamlined, but also just to increase student engagement. The math is going to be applied, so every program goes to math together. And, but at the same time, they're working through the math work keys curriculum. So those skills are going to be taught as well as content that's relative to their program. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. One, of, one of the concerns um, in thinking about it, and it may not be um, without looking at more detail, is it's a really good idea, the embedding is, is what we're talking about, embedding those skills right. in the already, already existing programs. But the problem is with a lot of like the state standardized tests is they use a very specific vocabulary related to mathematics. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how well that is going to translate over to an embedded, even though it's the same concepts, if they're talking about it in different terms and different vocabularies, yeah. the students may not be able to interpret what the test is asking when they get there, even though they have the skills. Well, and I think a piece to understand, too, is that embedded credits mm -hmm. currently as they are, are credits that are embedded in the program by the teacher of the program. So you're talking about someone who's not necessarily a, um, a content, content specialist in English or math. Yeah. And so, yes, those things are, you know, things are, are done in the program, but they're not necessarily nuts and bolts strategic like they will get in a math or an English class. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Right, yeah. right. And right. then the last reminder that, you know, we've still been working on, the high school's actually been trying to push the standards down so that the students get three years of science standards before they get to 10th grade. But when the state did all its moving around at the testing, they put the Vermont science assessment in 11th grade. Right. And if our students are going over to the tech center as 10th graders, yeah. um, right, they're losing out on excuse me, as 11th graders, they're losing out in a year of science mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. without it there. Uh, so 30 percent. Oh. Am I allowed to ask questions or, or not? Um, I, don't, I don't see why not, but that might be something the board should look at. Um, Before an action there's just one. Yet. What? Right before an action is taken, yes. Right, but, oh, right, because we have an action. Yep. Right, right, mm -hmm. so we can take Excellent. a question. <laughs> yes, you may ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, thank you. <laughs> so just for everybody's background, I have somebody that's done a lot across the board and all I'm kinds gonna, of. Can you just 
Tell us your name and, and your relationship to the board. Are you a community member from one of the... I'm Martha Hafner. I live in Randolph Center. My son graduated oh. here. That's um, I continue to work within the schools throughout the area to some in minor degrees at this point. But um, I have worked at RTCC, so I do have some inside acquaintance with it. Um, I've also did a, a, an extensive study in a program called um, The Big Picture, which perhaps a few of you are acquainted with. But I really liked that approach where they're working to try and integrate students into some kind of a potential job for their future. And so I ask in that, with that perspective, is the program, do you have any way of tracking your students once they graduate? to have any sense of how successfully you are integrating in them into um, jobs down the road? Great question. Um, yeah, we do have a three-year follow-up. The state requires us to follow up with kids um, down the road and see where they are, I think, in six months and I think three, three years. So we can see, okay, did they continue with that four-year degree that they said they were going to do? Or did they get into industry? So we do track that data. Okay. And, and are you seeing a good success rate with what it is, yeah. or has COVID made it so yeah, impossible no. to see what's happening? Or it's been it's it's good. Okay. Numbers are good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from board members? Up oh, and do we have it. Do we have a couple of people? On? Well, they just logged in a little while ago. Katja is coming back again. I'm not sure who the phone number is. Yeah. But that may be Gary. Gary okay. Clark. So any other? So that may, that may be my phone number, actually. Ends in four four. Yeah, that's me. Okay, it's gotcha. Oh. And I, I may drop off as I'm as we're driving. So if I do, I'll try to jump back on again. Okay. I'm also here. This is Ted Kalman, and my number also ends in four four. Oh, oh, I think so it's it is Ted. Okay, <laughs> perfect. What is it? Thank you, Ted. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to get on the link. Yeah, I had to go home. I got, I got a sick kid, but um, the link seems to be broken, so I'm just joining by phone just to listen in. Um, okay. So, so back to the the embedding. Are is there some professional development to help those content teachers learn the language of the mathematics and the language of the ELL, so you, ELA, and the science, so I mean, that maybe we can. I love the way you think. Improve Just those want to say that. Scores or Absolutely. Get, you, know, um, you know, I think essentially what a lot of the CTE centers have are curriculum coordinators that work with all of the programs and help them to embed those academics in. Um, you know, we're a small school, and I think some of the things like that other schools in Vermont have, like an outreach coordinator or a curriculum coordinator. Those are things that just haven't been afforded to us yet. But as we grow. Mm -hmm. But as your as your numbers catch up and we, you start to gain the benefit absolutely. over the course of the, that silly six semester. Absolutely. Um, it's on my radar yeah. for sure. Yeah. Right. So and, and that is something that the big picture did as well. They integrated their math and science into the areas that their students were interested in yep. so that they were getting better response mm -hmm. to the math. Absolutely. Okay, so we as a board need to approve. We need a motion. We need a motion to approve the this CLNA. CLNA report. Comprehensive local needs assessment from Felicia. So do we have mm. a motion? So we'll have a motion from Chelsea. Do we second have a second. That? Seconded from Sarah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So it is thank you for letting approved. me come into your agenda. Yes, you're it. welcome. You're welcome. Actually, now I remember you did put a thing in just the very last second. It's all good. Okay, thank so you. we're good to go. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Katya, are you with us? You're up on the agenda next, Katya, with just a report out about uh, from the ownership linkage subcommittee. Are you there? <laughs> I wonder if she's driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Uh, well, um, because I'm on that <coughs> committee, I will, I will, I will stand in for Katya, just because we talked about it a little bit during the agenda meeting. Um, so. Katja had put together a, a doodle, doodle poll, um, and because it was the end of the summer and people were on vacation, getting kids ready for school, uh, we ended up not meeting. So um, she's going to put out another one, mm -hmm. and we will meet. In the meantime, um, I had contacted Jackie Wilson, who had brought up this whole idea of the portrait of a graduate. Because if, if you remember, the ownership linkage group is going to be sort of looking at how do we do that with our community to use that process as a way to just um, uh, evaluate how our ends are and if they're still in alignment with what our community feels is uh, the right priorities for the district. So. To be determined, <laughs> we'll, we'll have more on that um, next month at the next meeting. Katja said she can't hear us. Oh, it's dear. Very poor. Oh. Oh. That's uh, All right. Um, well, well, we'll, we'll continue on then. And that's, I don't know why. I'll let I'll let somebody that know understands the technology. Should we take a little break and see if you? Can um, I might it be out? on Koch's end. Uh, as far as I can tell, everything's on and working. Okay. Uh, Tev, can you hear us? Someone Tev is there. Tev, can you hear us? Wait, I don't know which. Yes, side. I I can. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hold on, just next week. Yeah, I I some of you better than others. Like Lane's pretty clear. That's what Katja just uh, said. She can hear Lane. I'm not sure who's not clear, but I'm, don't give I'm loud. Out. That's why. <laughs> where is yeah. this? Where is? Okay, so uh, the speaker uh, is in the owl. Yeah. Because those, that's some um, orca, and this is orca, right? Yeah. And that's. That's uh, nice. Yeah. So Katja, can you hear me now? Your mic cuts in and out. She said she was in an area that. Uh, I'm sorry, I can only hear Lane when he speaks. I can't hear anyone else on microphone, so apologies if you're <coughs> trying to speak to me. Yeah, we were, we were, I just sort of filled in the group on the ownership linkage subcommittee to just let them know that we're going to do our doodle poll and try to connect this in the next few weeks. Uh, Due to just the busyness of everyone's schedule at the beginning of the school year. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's typical. Yeah, I, and if you're speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I cannot. I see you. I see you look moving, but I really, it's not coming through okay. at all. So I'm so yeah. sorry. Ah, don't worry about it. Oh, here, give her start a... narrating. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh. All right, so um, we're gonna we're actually gonna take like a five minute break <laughs> because we're the next thing on our agenda is the board orientation, um, and I wanted to just uh, go over. I wanted to be able to project. Uh, on the screen so that we could pull up the different documents that um, we went over. Um, Do you need Todd? Do you want me to find Todd? Yeah. No, I think if I, I think if I, you, you think if I just um, connect to the meeting, I'll be, I'll be able to do present yeah. screen. Yeah, no, no problem. Take care of yourself. Okay. So. We're doing it actually see. Um, well, we can just touch on everything and then. Okay. And they, those documents we emailed out to you all. So hopefully you had a chance to read through them. Um, oh, there we go. Full screen. Does that do it? Does that make? No. It didn't do anything. Well, you're using Google. I can't help you out with 
Microsoft, there's a little slider in the bottom right corner. You can make it bigger. Uh oh, now I've lost. Oh well, I think I can function. So I don't know. Maybe I don't even need to be sharing my screen. Um, does ever did? Although no one has it with them, so I'm going to turn it over to Chelsea. She's going to um, uh, sort of go over some of the key things that we put together. Um, and all of these documents will be um, printed and put into a binder this size, so it's not going to be humongous, um, but it will have sort of this general information. And in addition to that, but we didn't send it out to you, will be all of our governance policies. So not the required policies, district policies, but all of the board governance policies so that everybody will have those as well as this general information. So take it away. Uh, so Ann and I met twice and we um, talked about the different things that should be in the orientation for new board members. And um, so what we came up with is uh, the first doc or the first section of it will be in the, you open your notebook and there's this and it basically just says um, what the time commitment is uh, who makes up the board and then it um, launches in three through twelve I think are taken directly from um, the VSBA sort of what is a school board so that you can just read through it and it has great information, um, you know, ends, executive limitations, board staff linkage, the governance process. Uh, so it basically just summarizes, you know, what the expectation is and what we do. So that's the first thing. Um, and then the next thing, there'll be so the schedule will be in there, the board members will be in there. Um, yeah. I don't have them on this document. And then the, the next, and everyone will get a copy of this, but we just thought this would be helpful information and we're just kind of summarizing it tonight for you all so that you can say maybe you know, this should also be added or maybe this should be deleted. Um, basically the negotiation expectation who does what for that is in there um, the rules of procedure Ann and I spent a while going through so everybody will get this there were a few people that we didn't have cell numbers for I don't know if it was because you didn't want to share your cell numbers but if you if you are one of those people that doesn't have a cell number on there um, I'm looking at Rachel oh, my address is right uh, Oh, and your address is wrong. <laughs> yep. So if you can let Linda know that information, she can um, go in and... I have these, so you guys could correct them if you want to. Oh, sure. These I've had since April. <laughs> right. And this document also just has committee assignments. So if you're like, oh shoot, what, what did I sign up for again? <laughs> um, especially for the negotiations, because hopefully we're going to kind of do those and not have to do them again the next year, so um, so that you know. And then some of this is just, again, um, some information that Linda, as our board clerk, has and has on here that's been passed down over time, I believe, um, just information about the warnings, where they're posted. So if you're like, someone asks you a specific question, you'll have that information, you can take a look at it. But when in doubt, you can always also just contact Linda. Um, uh, she does that, um, that stuff. Um, and then the other sheet was just the meeting dates, the board meeting dates, which um, we all kind of, like, I have it in mind just so that I can remember. 
some of you may not need yes. the hard copy. <laughs> I need the hard copy, the electronic. I know. I'm good with hard copies. Um, so then we talked about the rules of procedure, and it's basically how we run our meetings, um, agendas, when the meetings are held, um, warnings, emergency meetings, kind of covers all of the stuff that we do. And if you have any questions about any sort of procedure, it should be answered in this document. Were folks able to read through it? Did anybody have any questions or did anything come up where you were like, wait a minute? Uh, I actually printed it out, so I have it. So you have <laughs> yeah, it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought it was very helpful being a new board member, um, in my opinion. Um, I kind of just figured it out as I went, but right. for the upcoming, if there's any new board members, you know, in March, then I think this will be very helpful, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and I, we sort of felt like it was helpful just kind of going through it. I mean, yeah. and for myself as the chair, um, it's really nice to have it here, and I like having it out to all of you because then you can help me if I'm not, if I'm not remembering, um, which, which will be great. And in the rules of procedure, whatever mm -hmm. that's called, um, when it talks about that we'll be um, voting in a chair and vice chair, does it describe what those jobs? Those roles are? Mm -hmm. So those are in our policies, mm -hmm. in our governance policies. So in our governance policies, it, it tells us what the chair's duties are mm -hmm. we don't really have anything for like board secretary or or are you considered a second uh oh where is that one? no i think that maybe i am because i took the minute she's the, clerk. That. And she's the clerk yeah she, yeah yeah so but linda's also considered the clerk which is sort of it's kind of strange. The I'm just a backup clerk. I'm the administrative <laughs> assistant for the board. I, I'd call it the administrative assistant for the board because I'm, I'm not part of the board. Yeah, but you're, you're voted in as um, as far as the annual meeting. You are the and right. Robin is voted in yeah. as the treasurer, right? Yeah. Right. Our treasurer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so it might be helpful to have like president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Who are these people? And their job Yeah. What What is their job? And what the clerk does. Yeah. What the board mm -hmm. does. Right. Right. In so, this kind of document, that just yeah. I think it. that like like this committee document, just a one pager that says president does this or chair does this. Right. Vice chair does that. Yeah. So we could meet again and talk about that. And yeah. the monthly agenda meetings. Right, right. What the oh, commitment is. Right. Those are good things to add. So yes, thank you. So yeah, we'll we'll amend that. So Linda, don't 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 uh, start copying anything until we've got everything. Well, you got to send it all to me. Yeah, the way I'll you want send it, it all to you <laughs> once we get it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So would folks like that on the sheet? that Linda put together where it says where you're, you know, what committees you're on and who's the chair, vice chair, or would you prefer to have it on this rules and procedures? Um, I think it should just be a separate one page thing that we write up. Okay. Okay. I mean, and we can yeah. take it right from the policies, summarize it. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or the, yeah. And then, if, you know, just a ch 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 Chair, right. vice chair, secretary, clerk, treasurer, and then the planning, the agenda planning committee. Yeah, because that's, yeah. Yeah. Who's involved? Yeah, that's Katja and I with Lane, and maybe sometimes it'll be Heather also. Because I'm just thinking about when I came on and I didn't, you know, offer to be voted into an officer, but I wouldn't have known what I was signing what up you, for yeah. time yeah. commitment wise. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So time commitment for each one of these might be a good thing to also. Right. Okay. Yeah. And like Chelsea, for clerk for you, 
you you take executive minutes because I'm not here for that. Yeah. So that's right. just a little, you know, something and you do. Linda's not here. It's the so I have a question right. about that. So I don't ever really write anything except mm -hmm. for like if there's a motion, I write what the motion is. Right. right? Yeah. And well, for executive minutes, okay. yeah, usually that's the thing. Okay. Um. Yeah. So those are the rules and procedures, and then. I don't know, Anne, do you want to talk about the other And stuff? then uh, the other thing that we are including in this is, um, let me get to that section. We're um, putting in a, a copy of the complaint procedure, so it's just the, um, the same one that is in uh, the little pamphlet, which I have somewhere. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, this, this is in pamphlet form, but there's also a PDF. So that's what I sent out to all of you, was just a PDF, again, of this procedure, just so that everyone is aware of it. Um, and that is really useful for when people come to you to be able to then say, oh, you have a complaint. Here's our procedure for that. Because um, oftentimes that might be why someone might come up to you in the grocery store or something and might not know um, what the process is. Um, so we have that in that in that packet, and then um, the other thing that we added was, and I think this came from Rachel way back when. Um, is the Vermont League of Cities and Towns um, has put together this, and and uh, our rules and procedures came pretty much from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Chelsea and I adapted it a little bit to kind of the way that we um, operate. Um, and then this I thought was really useful for board members to have because there's a whole section on executive session um, and so uh, and I decided to just give you the whole packet <laughs> instead of instead of just the section on executive session but again that's something to get familiar with um, and then also um, the email information like how to manage emails and what you know what what to avoid so that you're not um, violating open meeting laws. Um, and I still, I, I tried to reach out to Pietro and, he, and he, didn't, he wasn't able to get back to me. There are a couple of questions that I have on sort of like what, how to handle emails and what we can, you know, if it's just like I sent you all those packets it's or, or all that information, you know, here are our rules and procedures to read over. That's just disseminating information. That sh that's not breaking any open meeting laws. Um, but I just want to make sure that everything that we're doing is not, um, not forbidden according to this. But uh, so page five goes over, oh, I might have missed it. Uh, no, I think it's further down. The um, executive session um, information. So if you haven't read through that, I, I would strongly recommend that you do that. It's, it's, um, open meeting laws. Did I already go by it? Mm -hmm. I might have gone by it, sorry. It's hard to. Do you want my? You got a hard. <laughs> what is executive session? It was right. Uh, work That's sessions, acceptance to open meeting law. Executive sessions. Yeah, I think it's down here a little bit further. What about executive sessions? Yes. So this it it basically goes through when and for what reason you can go into executive session. For us, it's mostly talking about negotiations, talking about personnel, um, 
when we do our quasi-judicial function, we're gonna we are gonna be in executive session. But it's just useful to just kind of have that. That way, you kind of know um, what and why. And when we make the motion to go into it, um, they recommend that you cite the reason, the law and reason why. Um, a lot of times I'll ask Lane, what, 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 is, what is the right Real estate one? transaction. <laughs> right, so right. Estate transaction. Um, to do that, yes. I found myself when I was looking through the PDF of the complaint procedure mm -hmm. and reflecting on the experiences we've had in quasi-judicial hearings this last year, the, the statement that we make them make a decision, I found pretty unsatisfying because okay. it doesn't say what kind of decision we make. This isn't, this isn't on you, Anne. This right, 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 right. It doesn't say what kind of decision we make. And we have been making decisions based, like, it's a pretty specific decision we're making. We're not just kind of rehashing what's gone on, right? Like, we're not, right. we're, we're not making our own new judgment of the situation. We are, we are judging the decisions that have already been made, and that's not clear there, which could lead people to be really disappointed in the process. Ah, I think yes. So. Yeah, because you, you mm. look at was the, was the process, the proper process followed, and, right. and was the conclusions reasonable based upon? Right. Yeah. Those are kind of the two things you're looking at. Mm. <clears throat> so maybe, are you suggesting this, that maybe we take a maybe look we at the take wording? A look at the, the wording of our, our complaint procedures. To make sure that is clear to people. Right. Okay. And to us. And to us. To right. 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 Yeah, no, you're not like, going in and doing an doing investigation here? and yeah. Right. You're right. just right. Looking, like, looking at the data. Was it reasonable? Was the pro was the proper process was followed? Hard. Was it capricious? Right. right. Yeah. Um so I don't know if that falls into the orientation. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But that's that but that's but that the orientation might be packet, something. So yeah. So we maybe that's something to bring up outside maybe. of like before the next meeting to Yeah, and maybe I can get uh, maybe I could get Pietro to take a look at that. He, sh he was or on vacation, the significant one, so he's back. I've had okay. email or two from the last couple of days. Okay. Um, so it's not on the agenda. So it's not on the agenda. Uh, so why don't I put that on the agenda for next time? But, and maybe we can take a look at and we'll, we'll just, I'll have that for something to take a look at um, as a board. Okay. So maybe people can tend, uh, So, so that we I we just sort of breezed over that. So I'm glad you came back to that because I didn't really I didn't pull that up and I just went into the That's executive fine. session information. Um, so that that I've got down to to put on the agenda for next time. And then the last thing is just looking at and under rules and procedures. There we have we have quite a bit put forward um, for public participation. So um, along with this brochure, there is another brochure that talks about public um, participation in our meetings. Um, but then we also have, uh, Chelsea and I put this together um, from what the, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has. And then um, in addition to that, the VSBA has one of the required policies for school districts to have. So that's one of the things that Lane has to make sure that the board has approved and that we have as a district. And that is policy A21. So I put that um, in here as well. So this is, um, a policy that we have approved through the consent agenda um, and again it's it sort of covers in a little bit more detail and a little bit different language but it's basically 
saying similar things to our to our um, to this rules of procedures that we got from the BCLBT. Or, I always I mess up that acronym all the time. Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Um, so rather than try and merge the two, I just we just sort of took both and we just added our our district policy on there. It's a little bit of redundancy, but it's basically just um, making sure we're really clear on what what we mean by public uh, participation. So when we redo the complaint procedure, is mm -hmm. that a policy? It's a procedure. Okay. So it's not. So we just change it, and it's like we vote on it or whatever, yeah. and then yeah. it's just done. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a good idea because I did read through it just now, and it looked at, there are some confusion. There is some confusion about right what it is, what we're doing. And I'll, I'll maybe have Pietro look at it, and he can kind of, he might, I might invite him to yeah. be with us to just make sure it makes yeah. sense, or he might have some ways to say things. Um, so that's, uh, so in the public comment part, so the other thing that um, Katya and I talked about during the agenda meeting, and just as we start the new school year, um, just so that we can kind of set the tone in the meeting. She wanted me to put together this sort of, that little statement that I read before public comment and to just get in the habit of doing it every time before public comment, whether there's a big crowd or not a big crowd, Absolutely. just so that <laughs> even if people go back and re, re you know, are watching Orca or whatever, they're seeing that it's not because there happens to be a big crowd tonight or whatever the issue is, but nope, this is our expectations. Um, I didn't go into the very specific minutia of everything that's laid out in, in the district policy and the rules and procedures, because then I'd be reading a whole lot. Um, so if, if any of you kind of, if, uh, I can send this out. Well, will that be breaking open meeting laws if I send it out? And just individually, if you have some little edits that you think might sound better, or if you're like, oh, no, sounds great. Um, or if you, it, right now, if thinking back to sort of, because I was trying to keep it kind of short, but also <laughs> make sure I kind of was setting a tone. Um, if you have any feedback, I'm not wedded to it. So I think it hit everything that yeah, they that sounds, you, know, yeah, you have to be great. recognized, you state who you are, mm -hmm. um, and uh, be nice. Yeah. And, and then I just need to make sure I'm like, ah, say your name, because <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always like eager to hear people, so then I like forget my own protocol. So anyway. I can yep. try it out and see how it feels, and as, it, as you go along, you might want to revise it, but I think that's your prerogative is the person who's saying it. Okay. All right. So if anybody has feedback, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. All righty. Um, so let's see. And then, uh, so uh, the last thing that we sort of talked about, and again, uh, Chelsea and I were just kind of, we were rolling along, kind of just doing the best we could coming up with things. Let me see. Uh, I think I put this, where did I put it? Oh, I think I put it in this one. I added a little section. Um, oh shoot, that's not it. Sorry, I, I am not really great with Google Docs. Do you want my hard copy? Uh, no, because this is something I didn't send out to you all. Let me just see if I can find it right now. Because <coughs> oh. uh, I thought it was right here in my... In my... All right, does anybody see? This is my drive, right? So it should be in here. 
put it. Well, let me go over here to my dogs. Because I was just looking at it at home, so it's got to be in here somewhere. I think this might be it. Okay, hold on. Should have practiced this at home. <laughs> So, oh, there it is. Is that? No, that's not it. Shoot. Um, hang on. Can I put it in on the bottom of this? I get confused with this silly Google Docs, but it's not supposed to delete anything, right? Oh, yes, I did. I added it already. That's the problem. I got ahead of myself. Um, so, uh, email communications to the board. This I haven't vetted with Pietro, and I wanted to just make sure that, it's, that we can do this. And maybe, Lane, maybe you, I don't know if you're familiar enough with kind of whether or not what, what we can do. So, uh, email communications to board members from the general public. Um, most of the time, and I was just sort of making this up based on kind of the kinds of things get, that get emailed to me or to the board as a whole over the last, you know, couple of years, tends to be kind of public commenty kinds of things. Um, but we haven't, you know, like Chelsea was like, what do we do? You know, that was one of the questions for the board orientation is what do you do when somebody, or, you know, like, someone might not know me but they know Sarah so they're like hey Sarah and they're emailing her so how, how does she handle that as a board member so um, this was what I put together um, and I don't know and I and I didn't get it out to you all in time for you to read it but and it's so tiny so I just read through it and it, the one thing that's vague to me is who's going to initially respond to the email. Yeah. And I think it should be the chair, unless I get a specific email from a person and then I get, and it doesn't go out to everybody else, then when I respond, I would CC everybody else. Say, I got your email, I'm forwarding it to the rest of the board. I actually have a question about the CC versus BCC. Or BCC. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't the person know that that we're, that all, we're all seeing it? Yeah. I, yeah. There's, a, there's a value in transparency. Like, you know, sometimes if somebody sends me a complaint about me or along those lines, those are, I always send them to the board. Um, that way there's there's transparency about it. Um, so there, it's, always, it's probably good to have it be the CC is what I would argue, right? Okay. That way they also know that the rest of the board is in the loop as well. Yeah. You know, so at least, at least they've been heard and, and considered. Yeah. Right. So, so what I put in here was uh, any board member may respond to an email but should copy the other board members, the superintendent and assi assistant superintendent so that everyone knows that a response has been sent out. But what I'm hearing is people would prefer that the chair respond or just one designated person it makes sense that it's the chair so so like you, so we all get the email we're all sitting there saying who's going to anyone's going to respond so then if we all know that you're going to respond then within 24 hours or something i don't know it helps with consistent messaging too um, okay and it just makes it so that people aren't like did anyone get my email do i right. i don't even know yeah Okay, um, so then, so I will change this up then, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this in here just so that people understand what the chair is doing, um, that, you know, if it's operational, I'm going to direct it to. Yeah, no, I think it's all great. Just... Uh, okay, okay, so I'll just, I'll, I'll, um, I'll edit this 
and then um, send it up out to you all and we can look at it again the next meeting um, and I'll just make sure that I'll have Pietro take a look at it because I just wanted to make sure that it's all right the way we're what we're doing uh, so uh, Okay. We are yeah. 20, uh, 30 minutes over. past our Okay. Our Although we didn't talk about, so what about in person when somebody approaches you at the grocery store, at the Little League field, at the soccer game? Um, So again, what I what I'm having board members do is just know what how to how to respond to that, and then where to direct people. So that I'm going to leave that way. Rather, you know, you don't need to come to the board chair to say, "Hey, this happened." Um, although, did I say? Good. Right, because I do say and let them know that you will share the comment with the entire board at the next meeting. So remember when we start public comment, sometimes there's some time. So that's where we can acknowledge if there's been some email um, emails that have come through or if someone's got a comment that they want to make sure the board is aware of to just make sure that all board members have, are hearing it. And again, that's just to kind of make sure that we're hearing what the public is saying and if there's this consistent message of something's going on, it's, it's information for us either related to our work or it's just information to, to the administration too to kind yes. of be aware of um, that's out there. All right, we good? Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So I will just redo this, vet it with uh, Pietro, and we'll look at it again the next meeting. Um, and then, Ann, do you and I want to talk about coming up with descriptions for a one page? Yeah. For yeah. all of the. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that. So, Linda, you don't have no. Nothing yet. Nothing. With nothing the notebooks. Until, right. <laughs> it probably now won't be until November because we've got to make sure this, this we're going to add on to the rules and procedures section. Okay. So, yeah. But you can, you can print it off if you want, want some of it. Sorry, i got to just make a note to myself so that I remember what I'm going to be doing. So moving on to and it's 640. Uh oh, and it's 715. Although we did the we did that um, the tech center thing that got us off track. Uh, so next up we have our monitoring that we need to do. So um, that was policy 2.0, 2.8, and 2.9. This is our second reading. Um, so this is when we um, approve the um, the monitoring reports, uh, and I actually had I had a, a, something that I wanted to just not for for next time, and that is. We're doing global constraints, which is kind of the overarching policy, which basically he's in compliance if he's in compliance with 2.1 through 2.9, but we're 
we're monitoring 2.0, uh, the global constraints one, the big, the big policy now before we've gone through all of the, the, the individual policies that sort of support being overall in compliance with, with um, 2.0. So I'm just wondering if for the future, maybe not this time, but for, the, for our schedule of monitoring that we put 2.0 at the very end of all of our EL policies. Do, do you understand what I'm saying, yeah. Lane? Doesn't that make sense to you? Because you, how do you know if you're, in, you know, you're overall in compliance? If you're in compliance with all of those underlying, all those EL policies, you're pretty much in compliance. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, it kind of makes sense. Um, I it would just change it on your yearly annual On our annual agenda. Agenda. Yeah. So that was just one thing that kind of came to mind because I was like. I'm just trying to think if it matters that the 2.0 is looking back at the previous year and the previous year's reports. Remember, it's not a forward-looking. Right, right. So those those reports may have already been covered, but I have to think about it a little bit. To, right. Oh, right? yeah. Because e ELs always look back. ENDS, ENDS always look back. Right, right. Yeah, let me think about that, too. Yeah. Didn't mean to throw a wrench in no, the works. No, no, no. Now that you're saying that. Um, <clears throat> although you didn't provide that for evidence. You didn't... You didn't um, put in your evidence um, that you were in compliance with all of the EL. Yeah, it probably was related to how I interpreted it. Because mm -hmm. um, the, the interpretation, so this is global constraint, is basically mm -hmm. I'm looking, making sure the district is, is behaving legally and properly. And in my interpretation of that, the, the district, you know, the only people, the only thing in the district that can be even properly or illegally are the personnel. And okay. so I look specifically at, okay, have, have I been working with the personnel to make sure that everybody knows the rules and is following them? Um, and that's kind of how, how I've interpreted that, if I remember correctly, without looking at the report itself. Right. And then talked about. Next year. And the, but this is look. It, these always look yeah, the year behind. Back. So yeah. two point eight, two point nine, they are looking back. Yeah. So two point oh at the end of two point eight and two point nine would also be looking back. So it would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we just move two point oh till after we vote on two point eight and two point. Yeah, it'll just be it'll just be changing which year you're looking back on. If you change it to the end of the end of the year oh because it's not now so no this this is looking back on the previous school year the 2020 21 so we would move 2.0 to if you moved it to the, the end of this school year, year it would be looking back on this year with yeah. first meeting. right so it just means that when we start up yeah that's what's so when we start up our monitoring, we're monitoring this previous, the, the past year. Up to the point that the, I've always considered up to the point that the report is. Yeah. Yeah. So when does that start? So we July start in again in, uh, in August. So August. this is the first round of reports that we're looking at last year. At last year. Yeah. And we'll go through all of the executive limitations over this year okay yeah now if i do a report in january the way that i look at them it's the previous year from when the report's written so if i'm doing a report in january that includes the december that just happened as well so it's a year back from when the reports are, each report is written and we can always ask for a monitoring report at any time but our schedule is these Every two months, we're doing a set of policies I think we uh, or a really set of monitoring. Unless there's a question, okay. and then we can just ask for it. Yeah. 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 And now that I think about it, I'm like, ah. It's complicated. Um, <laughs> it's complicated, and that makes it more complicated. <laughs> I think. Yeah. So, 
The question is, though, I would still say for evidence, Your evidence of compliance. I would like, I would like you to see I'm in, I'm in compliance because I'm not out of compliance in 2.1 through 2.9. I mean, I, to me, that's a pretty strong piece of evidence. Actually, it makes sense. But I'm, I'm not opposed at all. Um, I just want to read through and. Right. Yeah. Um, all right, so let me write down when I got a clear head. So this is too low. But it makes sense. It makes it make sense as, as you're talking about it. Right, and then, sorry to be picky, Lane, but in 2.8, under um, the the oh, the long one, the the policy pre preamble. Mm -hmm. Again, your evidence. You just wrote, "I report compliance." You can say you're in compliant, but you're in compliant because you're in compliance with. So it goes with the enumerations one through twelve. Yeah, it goes in the interpretation. Interpretation says um, since the overall policy wording is a general statement that is defined by its enumeration, so that's one through twelve. Right. One through twelve, the overall policy is in compliance if each of its enumerations are in compliance. So I've right. kind of said that. As so an interpretation. right, but you didn't say in your evidence. You said I'm. You said I reporting. Oh, compliance. I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, structural. But yeah, makes sense. You're in compliance because you're in, you're compliant with the enumerations one through twelve. Gotcha. I mean, it's just a see below. Yeah. Right. Evidence C below. Well, that makes sense. And then there was. There's just one I had a question about, but that I'm going to talk to you separately about. Okay. It's not a big deal. Um, uh, oh, and then this this new one, two point nine. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I was wondering about in uh, for evidence, I'm just wondering if it might be helpful for the board to know and again not to make you have to do a ton of extra work but just a list or a website of all current policies and protocols or handbooks they're up there i can i can put the link in okay. yeah they, they exist okay. up there i just think the board should that should be our evidence is that yeah. bam here they are perfect in, at this link they're in thought I included this one. It. Yeah. Yes. Board and public have access to all the district's policies via the district website at or in Southwest Orange okay. Policies and Procedures. That's going to be updated, though. I'll, I'll change that because we're, we're creating a new website uh, behind the scenes. Okay. Oh, good. So, yeah. so as long as we have somewhere that that it's, We've that got it's the, yeah. all listed. We did a somewhere. major reconstruct of that in the last couple of months. Um, we had been keeping all the policies in a handbook that was on the website. But it was a pain in the butt because the policies have been changing so fast lately, coming down from the state and the feds, that you literally have, it screws up the formatting. Um, you have to change the table of contents. You have to. So what we did is we just put it by policy A1, A2, A3, A4, and that way when we got to pull one off the website. We just pull the A1, put the new one up in, up in place. So there's not a handbook, but they're all there. Okay. that over the summer. Um, and then there was one other thing that I saw. Just because this is a new one for yeah. us. Um, that was my best interpretation on the first shot, so yeah, it no, may change I, a little. It's mostly in the evidence that I'm just looking for a little bit more detail. Um, uh, it was in provision number three on 2.9. Uh, 
all administrative staff were required by the superintendent to attend a full day of training run by the district's legal counsel. I just thought maybe you could just do uh, list the date in the participants. Yeah, uh, uh, just so that we, you know, it's just a little more specific. And okay. the um, the forms and the documents and everything that's used as part of the process on the website. It's in a shared shared folder that we all use. List of. Yeah, that so much I don't. But to know that on this date these folks had the had the training. Yeah. I don't need to see the documents, but. Yeah, no. Heather uh, Heather Lynn came in did the training for folks right in house, which was good. So those were. Um, so I don't know if, uh, so there are just some slight changes. Do we want to um, accept them as is? I've just sort of had, or do you want, I would suggest that we have him update them and then we'll just take a second look and approve at the them at the meeting. next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you need a motion for that? Yes, I should have a motion for that. Um, I make a motion that Lane update monitoring reports. Right? Is yeah, that what we're talking it's about? just two points. Two point on two point eight, eight and, and two point nine. Oh, and were you going to use um, the evidence of having all your ELs? in compliance for 2.0? I can. Yeah, I actually wrote the note down. So I'm flipping, flipping through making sure I got the notes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So do we have a second? A second. Second by Megan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. And then... And I'm voting no on that one. Oh, you're voting no. Okay. I was just going to say, can you, for each vote, ask if there are any objections? Oh, sure. Just We usually are unanimous, but in okay. case they're not. All right. Uh, so did you get that, Linda? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the facilities monitoring report, which is used for evidence for the EL 2.6 asset protection. Sure. Um, I can give a, a quick brief yeah, overview. Brief um, overview. So, ex especially for th folks that are a little newer to this, um, anything, any purchases, any work that's done above ten thousand dollars sh usually shows up on here. It used to be before we raised it, um, because what we've been finding is that most of the work they they do, it's either a hundred dollars or it's a hundred thousand. You know, there's not not a heck of a lot that's in the middle, and they've had so much work to do. I don't want to add any more <laughs> to their plate. Um, but what you'll see, uh, the important things is, you know, we've got the estimates, you've got the final cost, uh, the project was complete, um, is the inspection initials. Um, this is the asset protection piece. So after they've reported to me that the work is complete or the item's been purchased and it's here, we literally go out and do a visual inspection and, and so that we're reasonably sure that, yeah, yeah, the, the work, work is done. Yeah, they said they, they bought the Ford F-250. It is here. Took a year and a half with all the supply chain issues they had, but yes, it is here. Um, and so what will happen is the ones um, that I'm checking off on or Robin or Heather are checking off on our initials on, those will come off the report next time and won't be there um, because they're complete and out of the way. Um, the priority level is on the far left, the school um, that it's associated with. Um, a couple of notes to, to put on here. Um, one of the things that they did not um, include, um, probably because it wasn't coming from facilities funding, but they did a lot of the work on it, and that was the installation of 118 clear touch boards in and around the district over the last month wow. um, that are up. So we've pretty much replaced all our, our, our presentation boards and, and smart boards and whatnot in the district at this point in time. Um, the OSSD office building, um, we were hoping to have that work done um, right off the bat in the fall. Um, we were only able to get one company to come in and, and uh, provide a uh, provide a, a estimate of what work they're going to do. We need to have three before we can move forward on it. 
Um, so we're in the process of requesting a waiver from the state for the other two. You know, if you if you legitimately went out and you've posted it, you know, a, a request for, and people have not replied, then you have to apply to the state to say, yeah, we'll waive waive the other two for you. So I want to see that work get up and going. Um, a lot of it's for ventilation there. It's the the one building in the district that doesn't have good ventilation on the inside. Um, the traffic piece that is currently we're kind of working a little bit on that right now. Um, that'll be a part of the discussion at the open forum tonight, and a lot of it centers on this side road here, whether it should be in operation or not. Um, the biggest concern is one of safety. We typically have three accidents there a year, um, including kids getting hit. Last year, the kid getting hit on the bicycle. Um, you know, luckily not seriously injured, but it is it is a major issue. Um, the biggest concern that we have at this point in time, um, and we want to do it kind of temporarily, I think up front we're going to just put barriers up before we do any major work. I want to see what happens at that four-way intersection up there that really needs the town or whoever, the state needs to come in and change that because that tight turn right. um, is, is deadly for, for big vehicles. They literally have to drive into town, go into one of the parking lots of the business there, turn around, and then come back to make that turn. Um, so I'm interested to see what, what the impact may be on that. The other possibility that came up with some of the public discussions on it is we just we, we put a half a dozen 40-foot high speed bumps on there, um, and that may slow, slow people down and make them cautious coming around the corners um, and, and whatnot. But, um, We'll, we'll find out and we'll get some more feedback from folks. Most of the feedback I've got, most were in support, one or two were, it, you know, it's going to, I get it, but it's going to be an inconvenience um, was, was kind of the attitude. Um, the last piece that's being investigated right now, so we don't have a lot of information on it, um, we, we've had, had trouble um, finding a person to actually do this work. We actually tried to start it about a year and a half ago. But for those of you that don't know, there was a significant, I think it was a grant that came in long before my time that built a wood burner um, that actually supplies all the heat to the RTCC RUHS complex that burns wood chips. Um, it's one of the buildings that's out behind by the athletic fields. Um, the problem with it is, is that the area where it actually burns the wood, it's lined with fire bricks, and those fire bricks have to be properly maintained and replaced uh, periodically. Um, for whatever reason, our last maintenance person, um, I don't know if he got tired of actually replacing the bricks or whatnot, but decided to mix his own kind of cement asbestos slurry or whatever the heck it is and poured it in there. Um, and so we need somebody to come in and take a look if it's possible to get that out uh, and get that repaired. Um, and a lot of that is, uh, we're trying to do it a year and a half ago for the potential, you know, if we get a surge in oil prices, right? which it was kind of looking pretty bad at the beginning of the year. It's gotten a little bit better at this point in time, but you never know what's going to happen over the course of the next couple of months of the war going on. Um, so we're, we're going to fast track that as much as we can. Um, if we can find somebody who is capable and certified of doing that work and thinks they can do it, um, you'll probably be getting a request from reserve funds. Um, I did have them load up. Um, there are a couple of truckloads of, of wood chips sitting there waiting. Um, and hopefully that'll, that'll help a little bit, again, if the oil prices are high this fall. So those are, those are the big ones, um, unless there's, there's questions on any of the parts and pieces here. So that wood chip burner has not been used in the last 10 uh, years? It has not been used in my time. I don't know how long before I started they stopped using it. Um, but again, when the transition happened, when, when I, I got a new, um, I got the co-facilities managers, we started to investigate it, and that's what we discovered was the reason they stopped using it. Um, so we're trying to, trying to get it repaired. But it's been difficult. It was a specialized company crew that came in to put that in. Um, so you got to have somebody who's got the right stuff to be able to do that work and take a look at it. So that's kind of what we're trying to find. But it's, I don't know, were you here when they put it in? You know how long ago it was? I, I've been here when they were using it, yeah. but I don't remember how long. Yeah. My, my, my guess is it, it had to be a multi million dollar grant when they put it in. I mean, that's a, Probably Robin would remember. Yeah, but long, long before my time. Um, and I, as far as I know, I think um, Wes Gibbs was actually one of the folks that was in charge of actually keeping it running, you know, putting the wood in and, and whatnot and taking the ashes out. Um, I know he was the bus director when I started and had been in that position for five years at least. 
five or six years. So it was at least six years before I started um, that they stopped using it. So you're getting someone to come in and see if it actually works, what it needs Re to work. Repair that piece <laughs> if it's possible and see if we can get it up and running. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good backup. Um, again, you know, $6 a gallon for, for heating oil, which is what it was looking like for a little while, was pretty scary, especially when you plan your budgets a year in advance. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, if you're not in the blue. They're down to 384 right now. I think we're getting ready to sign into a contract for it, so um, it has improved significantly. Other questions, facilities? Seeing no questions, we'll continue on. Uh, so this was, again, some more board work looking at our policy uh, 4.3. This is, again, our self-evaluation of how we're doing. Um, this one has to do with our annual agenda. Um, and I apologize, you didn't all have it ahead of time and print it out um, because I didn't get it to Linda in time to have it in the packet for August's meeting. So um, a few of you don't have printers to be able to print out the, the, the evaluation forms. So. Um, do you remember this was something that Jackie um, recommended that we do as a board to just evaluate how we're doing as a board following our own policies and doing what we um, what it says we sh we should do was everyone able to take a look at that and do the self-evaluation um, and last time we sort of looked through Kind of hard to figure out how to because everyone is sort of evaluating and then um, coming up with examples um, any suggestions on how to kind of meld all of our responses together did anything stand out to people that oh we're doing really well with this and maybe this is an area of uh, work to be done so I did read through it and I did write what we did yes 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 for a B and C on the first page and then on the second page um, again it just comes back to ownership linkage mm -hmm. and that's we're in much. progress we're in progress well, that's, that's what I put year. in like, progress yeah. this year yeah. so um, I mean looking back on the past I don't think we've done that well but I think we have a plan going forward so that's all we can Asking. Yeah, yeah. That's how my assessment went. Mm -hmm. In progress. Um, so right, and so this last page is kind of a critical one. So I I would say we're probably all in agreement that um, the area for improvement this year I picked out two. So that ownership linkage and just board education, and we're in progress on both of those. So I think we're pretty good. Um, and what actions will we commit to taking in the next year to improve our application of this policy? I think kind of following through. Yeah. <laughs> meeting, the subcommittee having a meeting. Yeah. Meeting, yep, yeah, and, and, and sort of creating that, that plan. Mm -hmm. And the education, the education's gonna call, kind of follow from the plan, I think, the, the ownership linkage plan, because I think we're gonna need to kind of educate ourselves to be able to pull it off. Um, so I'm thinking by June or July, we can kind of look back and say, how do we do? So, um, right? All right, um, so in your packet, there should be a selfie valve for 4.7, which is, um, I think it's the, um, what is oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so so if you don't have a printer, <laughs> um, you've got a hard copy of it, um, and, and you can use that. Did you put it at the end, Linda? It's right after 4.3 in this, yeah. in this okay. second packet. Oh, in the second packet. Okay. All right. 
So then, um, the last time when we were we were doing our uh, the monitoring of our of our policies, we found in 4.2 um, that we wanted to change up the the wording slightly on on that one to just be a little bit more specific, um, and that is in the on the first page of the second packet of of information. So it was just number three, be familiar with all required, and we just changed it to, uh, it was all required policies in effect, and we changed it to the OSUD board governance policies in effect. Um, so this is a second review of this. It, uh, do we have a motion to accept this change in wording? So moved. So moved, do we have a second? Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so that is our new wording. So Linda will fix that in our policy uh, policies that are on on the web page and in our that will be in our packet. Um, Okay, and then the next thing is we have, so, and it's going to actually combine the advocacy and, so I, if you look under the agenda, the VSBA regional meeting was September 8th. I attended that one. Um, they were talking a lot about governance, which was great because I was like, oh, good. <laughs> we're kind of looking at, and one of the things they were talking about was just you know, meeting protocols and just being clear with understanding your governance structure and using your governance policies to look at outcomes and and uh, hold and accountability. So um, I felt pretty good as I was sitting there hearing from other um, boards um, what's going on in our region. Um, and then the other thing that's happening is the VSBA is doing uh, a conference. All of you are probably getting the information about um, the conference. And I read about it, and now I'm like blanking on what the big... Lake Mori. Uh, at Lake Mori, right. And they're doing... What was the key? The keynote is on... I actually haven't read it since I signed up for it. Two yeah, months, months, I just got a reminder. I can send it yeah, out to you guys. I, yeah. I just looked at it today. I can't yeah, and I can't remember either. But it looks really good. I know that. Um, so if you would like to go as a board member, let Linda know. It's part of our again. It's part of the board education. So I will be going. I haven't told you that, Linda, yet. Um, Surprise. You can stay overnight if if it's easier for you, um, or you can go back and forth. Um, Heather and I will be there, and so it actually it does meet a state law requirement for that superintendents and chairs are supposed to spend eight hours in a training together. Yeah. So it's okay. usually a good, Yeah. that's, that's kind of why they set it up the way they do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and it would be helpful you guys would read because they ask some questions like if you're staying for the banquet or if you're going mm -hmm. to what do you Friday, want for lunch? going to Thursday, it'd be helpful if you could register yourself if I but and let me know so I can do a purchase order for you guys. Okay. But okay. um I can send you out the information. If you yeah, want. I have it. I just don't have it memorized. Um, so otherwise I gotta find out what you want if you're staying for supper right, and what you want. Right. And all that kind of so thing. So I will I will register myself and let okay. you know. Yep. Um, are you guys staying over? Or are you no? no I usually, we usually drive out. Usually, too much work going on. Come out of the board. The yep. board. So, yeah. do we have to vote on that expenditure? Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I just wonder. If yeah. Well, we probably it's already been allotted. Just uh, education. Yeah, because you like, we already voted. To I think you're right. For board education. Yeah, 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 so so then you don't the have to specifics of how you how, how we're using it. Yeah. I have no idea. Good luck. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, 
if we want to, we can. Nah. Uh, but yeah, I, so and other board members can attend if they would like to. If you are attending, so maybe I can carpool with you guys, or if there are other board members, be nice. It's a it's a pretty ride. It goes <laughs> over Chelsea Mountain and past the lake and whatnot. But it is a long ride each morning and a long ride back at night. So, yeah. what is it about an hour? Uh, to get there, hour fifteen. Yeah. Um, the the meetings are actually they they generally <laughs> they're different little training sessions. Um, half of them will be exceptional. The other half will be kind of mediocre. Uh, but if it's not something that you've had before, even the mediocre ones will be interesting. Um, they do their proxy work in the evenings usually. So you know I'll be that's the only problem with it driving. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll be hanging out with the VS. Uh, the Vermont Superintendents Association because we do our votes on our organization in the evening. So even though I'm not staying overnight, I might not be getting out of there until 7 or 8. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and Heather, Heather will be in the same ballpark. But. Yeah. So if you're interested in going, take a look at the, the material, register, let Linda know, um, and you want to carpool. So that brings me to this um, Visbit. Uh, so this is the um, insurance company that the district uses, right? Yeah. Um, and so they have they have board members um, can vote. They have a meeting at the conference. They do it partly because then they can yeah. get somebody to show up. Um, so since I'm going, if you want, I would be willing to be the person to um, vote on our behalf, and I'm going to get in touch with Robin and, and Lane and find out what their feelings are on it because, again, this is sort of stuff that's operational, and, but by st the way oh, the Oh, have they given you a up, list? I haven't even seen the list of what they're going to be looking at. Yeah, they. I'm not a voting member, so that's probably why. Yeah, so I'm. I figured I would just meet with you and Robin and just yeah. find out sort of what they thoughts. What your thoughts are, since yeah. you deal with this stuff, and but I have to be be there as the voting the member. Be cheap. I think there's different parts. Like there's one unemployment compensation. I don't, I don't know much about me. The Robin would, but there's like three different things you got to sign up on. Right. Once, uh, some's right. Visbit and some's Beehive. So the question for the board is: um, We need to have a proxy. So you're going to send somebody to be at this meeting and to vote on behalf for the district. Um, I move that we, as a board, authorize Ann Kaplan to be our Beehive Visbit proxy. I second. second that. Oh. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, so I will do that for the board, and I will get input from our, you, our folks so that we know what we're, so I know how to vote. <coughs> All right, um, and then I went over the, the regional meeting and the conference. We've already had Felicia's information. So next up is just approving the minutes from the last meeting. And then the professional contracts. I didn't see those. Were, are they? They're in there. They're in the packet. Oh, okay. Oh, they're in the packet. Oh, okay. the the All right. Five, five pages long. So, oh, okay. I have kind of a procedural question here. We 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 vote. The, we uh, approve the consent agenda as a as a chunk. As a chunk. And I wasn't here at the last meeting, so I don't feel like I can approve the minutes because I didn't. I wasn't here. I'm sure they're accurate. But I want to approve the other pieces of it. So can I just prove it up like can I vote to approve it all even though I don't have any first hand knowledge of the minutes? Is that, is that wrong? Is that wrong? Uh, it is now that you told people. So I'm just gonna abstain. <laughs> you'll, you'll abstain. <laughs> I also was not here at the last meeting, so you'll also abstain. But yes. I mean if you if you read the minutes. I read the minutes. So if you read yeah, the minutes okay. You're uh, you're saying, yeah, I see what you're saying, because you weren't here. Did that really happen in the meeting? They sound good. <laughs> <laughs> they have a nice ring. Yeah, you, what you're saying makes sense. 
Okay, so I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Do we have I'll a second? Second that. Seconded by Hannah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. And then all those All those staying. abstaining. <laughs> oh, We've got two. Okay. There we go. Uh, and then uh, last up is we need a motion to um, request that Lane and Heather um, get negotiations started with the uh, teachers union. Yeah, yeah, the support staff have, have already reached out, so it's so just moved. Awesome. So moved. Do we have a second? I second. Seconded by Sarah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So I'll get the letter. Go it for it. All right. So we'll get that ball rolling. Um, and again, you all have that list, so you know which committee you're on for negotiations. And oh, you will the, be so the emailing out for yeah. a date. So the, the question, since we're here for two seconds. Um, and this is for both committees, those that are on the CBA or the support staff, because they would occur in different weeks anyway. Is there a particular night or nights of the week that work best for folks on those committees, or nights that need to be just nobody can make it? Or um, I'm on the support staff, and I know Thursdays through the month of October are pretty difficult. Okay. Um, oh, for soccer professional yeah, for yeah. Us soccer well, yeah. moms and coaches. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, that's a good point because a lot of the staff will have the same issue. Okay. Yeah. Are, will they still be virtual, or can we do? In I plan on having them in person. Okay. It's it's Great. just easier, especially if oh, you got to yeah. pass papers and sign off on tentative agreements and whatnot. No, oh, I'd rather. So Thursday's bad. But let's get them going sooner rather than later. Well, that's the reason okay. I'm, I'm, we put on the agenda for you to authorize us to reach out on your yeah. behalf to get it going. Um, support staff already did. Um, C CBA, for some reason, the teachers tend to sit a while sometimes. I remember from last year. Yeah. So <laughs> this, way, this way we can ask. So, Lane, you're at all of these meetings also? Uh, typically, what I'm going um, to do is, as part of Heather's kind of orientation and training, um, I'm going to have her focus on the support staff. I'll be there as well, um, but I'll be working with her to try to get get through that. Support staff is, is, is generally much easier. It's not as complex as the, the CPA. But then you'll be at the other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll be at both. Um, what I will also do is at least we should have at least one of them, um, and that's uh, with each group is us meet together either in person or remotely just to talk strategy for a little while. and and concerns and things that might come up and, and whatnot, just so that people are a little oriented. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay, that's a great idea, because I have no idea what, it, what the process even looks like. I mean, I did a couple small yeah. things, but nothing yeah. like this. No. You're, you're with us, right? Yes. Okay. And you guys have done it before? Yes. Mm -hmm. You on the teacher or the support great. staff? Teacher. teacher. Have you been on the teacher before? Yeah. Last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. We both were. Yeah, it is different. We were in that party. <laughs> I was in the one. It's a process. Yeah. I'm I'm looking support forward to staff as well. looking forward to it being in person versus online. Yeah. That was really yeah. difficult. Yeah. And it's it's a, they've got a whole different lineup this year. Um, yeah, I did see so. that. Yeah. So How many years are we doing this time? Are we doing three? Are we doing five? I'm going <laughs> to, off, off, it has to be an agreement with the union. I'm going to say three. I am actually going to reach out to Pietro. Um, sometimes there's a limit on how many years you can do. Most states it's five. Um, I might even, as we have that meeting discussion, you know, weigh the possibilities. Is it, it can we just do a five year? Um, if, if the state allows it, sometimes they don't. Yeah. But. Yeah. Just seems like we've just been doing. It's yeah. well, we had a lot of NYU's right. in, ad in addition yeah. to the negotiations. Yeah, so it's, right. it's yeah. been a time. Yeah, and it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. All right. Any questions um, on any of the reports? Uh, the only, only one we should say something about is the financials. Um, financials are good. Um, typically, you would expect them to spend, like I said, about 8.3% of their overall total each month. Um, so they should have spent about 16% at this point in time, 16.6. They've only spent about 9%, so they're in good shape. 
Um, if you take a look at the individual lines, like there's a technology line and a maintenance slash facilities line, you know, you would expect them, if everything were linear, to also spend, you know, about 8%, a little bit more per, per month. Um, the two to be cautious of, though, are technology and facilities because they do a lot of their work in the summer. So they, they do a lot of spending up front during the summertime because that's when the contractors are available and they get the big, big items done. Um, so they, they might be below that, and that's perfectly normal. Um, there was a quirk on there. It looks like one of her formulas are off. It is stating that there's like 680% of the money left over, which makes no sense. So I, I think she's just got to adjust the formula in that cell, and I'll talk with Robin when they see her about that. So, but it looks good. Any questions? Uh, so recap for next meeting. Um, we're going to take a look at that complaint procedure. So if you want to take a look at that um, between now and the next meeting, um, I'm going to go over with Pietro, just make sure um, how we're going to manage emails and um, in-person contacts from the public. Um, and then Chelsea and I are going to meet to, to um, go over and just sort of outline the different roles and time commitments for the different officer duties on the board for more information in that orientation packet. And then once everything is kind of approved by the board, we'll have Linda print it all out and everybody will get a, a binder. Awesome. The only quirky thing, and I hate doing it to folks, is we had not had an event today that we should probably talk about in executive okay. session. Oh, okay. Oh, darn. So, so. This, okay. Just because it might result in a quasi-judicial. Oh, dear. Uh, let's just put that back right now. So, okay. no, I'll, I'll keep it short, but um, okay. just the discussion. Okay, so we are going to move. Uh, I think you have to move to add it yes, to the agenda we, first, because it's not on there. Uh -huh. And then... Okay. And then you can move into. So I need a motion to add an executive session. I move we add an executive session to discuss an incident. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then we need, I need a motion to move into executive session. And we'll send Orca on your way because we probably won't be making any motion coming out of it. So you could. Yeah, there won't be a motion. Okay. And hopefully you, you get your homework done tonight, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> now it's recorded, so. Yep. <laughs> and, you, and you agreed to it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, you I'm, just made that. Hannah's moving okay. that hand into the session. So I said for the for incident is what I said, but yeah, student student student, so it needs to be confidential. Have you moved, or you're on the you're in the uh, Oh, so we, we have a second. Oh, okay, second. second. I'll second. And all those in favor. Aye. 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 So it's a late Aye. night. Aye. Aye. Sorry.